at the end of the meeting, the webinar, Wienke will try to answer or otherwise via mail. Okay, Wienke, the floor is yours. Please, go ahead. Yes, thank you, uh, Diederik, uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, to tell some, something about the FAMU project and the FAMU database. Um, I'm, a, I'm a senior researcher at uh, NIVEL, the Netherlands Institute for Health Services Research, uh, established in Utrecht in the Netherlands. Um, welcome to you all. Uh, good afternoon uh, for those uh, in, in the UK or Ireland. Uh, good morning. Um, the, 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 the reason for this webinar is actually uh, the publication of a book that you see on the screen, <coughs> uh, which is called Building Primary Care in a Changing Europe. It has been published uh, by the European Observatory on Health Systems and Policies. And uh, the book <coughs> is, a, is a kind of conclusion of a project that was already finished earlier, uh, the so-called FAMEU project, which is, uh, which is a project uh, on monitoring um, the strength of primary care systems uh, throughout Europe. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, before before I, I start with my presentation, I want... Hmm, I'm not getting the next one. I'm not getting my next slide. Ah, yeah. Uh, well, this slide is clear enough. Uh, I don't know whether you are, uh, you, whether you have been informed about the death of Janko Kiesnik. Uh, <clears throat> he was uh, not just uh, uh, an enthusiastic uh, GP from Slovenia. He was also, um, he, yeah, it's fine. Uh, he was also uh, a devoted uh, teacher in uh, family medicine and very active uh, uh, in, at the European level in, in Wonka and uh, uh, European uh, General Practice Research Network. So <clears throat> he passed away uh, two days ago and I want to just to, 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 uh, to, to stand still by this uh, sad fact. Well, <clears throat> uh, life goes on. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's how it is. So, um, speaking about uh, uh, reforms in primary care and speaking about the need to strengthen primary care systems in Europe, uh, we need to think about why this is needed and then we, we the, the origins of the need for change uh, are actually in uh, the current challenges in healthcare systems overall. Uh, we, we know most of them, but I just want to mention them to, to, to go back to the roots and to, to, to see where is the, the origin of, uh, of the need for um, uh, system change and uh, primary care strengthening. Uh, first of all, we see demographic developments in all countries the aging of populations. And related to that, we see that uh, the demand for care is uh, becoming much more complex uh, in a way that more uh, healthcare providers are involved uh, as a result of the increase uh, of multimorbidity. <clears throat> uh, we also see that demand is changing in terms of location where it is uh, required. Um, for several reasons. Uh, hospitals are getting smaller, not only, but also the preferences of patients uh, make that home-based care is uh, more in demand. So, and, and that's also helped by the, uh, by the uh, te technological uh, possibilities. Furthermore, we see in all countries a greater diversity of patients which is related to, to migration uh, you see uh, migration for economic reasons, you see asylum seekers, and, uh, and you see within the European Union uh, a huge uh, migration between uh, East and West. And uh, these people, they are seen in primary care. And these people uh, see doctors 
with different uh, uh, different expectations, different differently formulated health problems, and they need to be treated and dealt with in a different way than the than 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 uh, than, than doctors and nurses and other primary care providers are used to do. We also see, that's also a consequence of demographic development, that the health risks are changing. Uh, these are more related to lifestyle. And so uh, a purely curative approach is no longer uh, the most appropriate uh, way of dealing with it. Uh, then we see, uh, well, that's, 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 that's fortunate, actually, that patients uh, have better access to health information and that they are better informed. So um, that's both a challenge to, to, to healthcare providers but also an opportunity to get patients uh, more involved. And then from the other side you see that uh, expenditures are rising and that <coughs> uh, those who pay for healthcare increasingly increasing amounts they say and what do we get in return uh, they say and they see that it it's more and more costly and what they get in return is uh, is not not uh, 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 relative to that so the rocket critical questions about are healthcare systems still doing the right things to, uh, to, to um, uh, improve the health status of the population. Well, I mentioned already the technological developments which, uh, which, are, which are really a challenge but also an opportunity to, uh, to, to fundamentally change the provision of care. And last but not least, <clears throat> a challenge is uh, in the health human resources. In many countries we see a shortage, uh, which is related to the aging of population because uh, 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 there are the, the people who receive care uh, are increasing while the working population, uh, relatively speaking, is uh, diminishing. And uh, that's also felt in uh, the, availabil the availability of, uh, of healthcare workers. Well, given these challenges, what, what adaptations uh, are needed? What adaptations are needed in the healthcare system? Um, well, they are quite fundamentally, actually. The first two, you see, that, that these are um, really uh, different approaches from from healthcare workers to, to, to patients and people. It's less about patients, it's more about people. Uh, first of all, uh, more person-centered care is needed, uh, rather instead of, uh, in addition to, uh, disease-centered care. Uh, furthermore, um, the traditional reactive uh, uh, attitude of healthcare system, waiting for patients uh, that come to the to the uh, uh, to the healthcare offices uh, should be uh, um, well replaced, probably partly uh, to with a more proactive population-based approach, which means that we are working more in the community uh, to prevent um, prevent people from uh, becoming ill and, and, uh, and from preventing health risks. So this requires a kind of redesign of tasks. Uh, there should be delegation within teams, teams should be expanded, etc. Uh, more attention should be paid to <coughs> care coordination because uh, as more um, more healthcare workers, more healthcare facilities at different levels are involved. Uh, the probability of um, of uh, uh, mis mis miscoordination is uh, increasing, and that should be avoided, of course. Then the care processes uh, should be uh, innovated. Uh, 
the traditional barriers between primary care, secondary care, between primary care and public health uh, should be taken away where necessary. And what we call transmural care change should be developed. And this can be achieved by better using uh, information and technology, it has been mentioned already. Uh, last but not least, and that's sometimes forgotten, if you change the healthcare system, if you change the roles of healthcare providers, um, well, you inevitably need to uh, change the medical and nursing education. In many countries you see that um, uh, the educational systems, uh, the medical educational systems are still very traditional and are very uh, difficult to change. So these adaptations are needed and uh, the question is whether there is evidence that strong, stronger primary care is an answer to these uh, challenges and is providing a possibility to achieve these adaptations. Um, <clears throat> well, what, what should primary care contribute to a healthcare system? Well, that has been answered uh, by uh, Starfield, Barbara Starfield and her colleagues. Um, and this is a, a quote from, from her. The essential role of primary care is to provide people with first contact care, health promotion and basic treatment. So that's, that's, that's the part that primary care should provide. And in addition to that, as well as to facilitate adequate access to other health care and related services for those who need this. And so that's, that's important. So it is to facilitate adequate access for those who need it. This implies a kind of filtering function of the primary care system. It also implies a kind of uh, coordination function of primary care because the facilitation uh, implies that health, uh, primary health care has overview, has oversight of, uh, of the care provided in other levels and by other providers. Um, well, the contribution of primary care, I should actually say primary health care, was already uh, an issue in the late 70s in the WHO declaration of Alma Ata. We, in, in September last year, we celebrated the 35th uh, anniversary of this uh, very important uh, uh, declaration. Uh, well, it was uh, really rhetoric rather than uh, than reality, and and then then because um, this the, the Alma Ata Declaration said um, that governments uh, have responsibility for health of the people. Okay, that's uh, that, that's for sure. And the main social target of governments, international organizations, and the whole world community in the coming decades should be the attainment by all people of the world by the, by the year 2000 of a level of health that will permit them to lead a socially and economically productive life. Um, <clears throat> That was rather optimistic and after all we can say that was maybe a little bit naive. And the declaration focused very strongly on primary health care. Primary health care is the key to attaining this target as part of development in the spirit of social justice. So these were nice words, but actually how should that work? That's the question. <clears throat> and then we make the step towards the research and the evidence about uh, uh, primary care, which is necessary to, uh, uh, to, 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 to precisely uh, uh, state what we're talking about. Primary care development requires research and evidence, that's my statement, although that's not enough. Uh, it's not enough because just providing, producing evidence uh, 
doesn't mean that the evidence is being accepted and that the evidence is being uh, used in a proper way. And uh, so I fully acknowledge the role of others, uh, other people than just uh, researchers in this uh, process. And uh, I must say, uh, uh, the, the European Forum for Primary Care is, is one of one of these, uh, let's say, stakeholders which is very important to bridge the gap between, uh, uh, in particular, for the for the for the forum, the bridge between um, research and practice, which is very important, and also between res uh, between research and policymakers. And also, for instance, the, the, at the European level, we see that the observatory, the European Observatory on Health Systems and Policies, is also an important uh, advocate uh, for primary care and also trying to bridge the gap uh, between uh, the research world and the policymakers. And the publication of the book that I spoke about, the publication of the book, which is the reason for this webinar, actually, <coughs> is uh, just one example of that. So I will tell you more about the FAME project. Um, the, pro the FAME project aimed to uh, measure the strength of primary care systems in Europe, and this project was uh, carried out uh, in a consortium. You see the, uh, all the universities and institutes involved uh, at the left side. Uh, you see lots of uh, people on the picture, although not all of them uh, uh, were uh, uh, more than uh, are on this picture. You also see that WHO Europe was involved, the EGPRN, the European GP Research Network, uh, the European Forum was involved, UFA, the European Public Health Association, and the European Commission funded it all, co-funded it all, I should say. So the study uh, was concluded in 2011, um, <clears throat> and in between 2008 and 2011, uh, data were collected in 31 countries, uh, mainly the EU countries, but also the usual additional countries in Europe like Norway, Iceland, uh, Switzerland, uh, and another one. Um, and then we, what we did, first of all, we defined, uh, actually, what we started defining the dimensions and indicators which referred to the rhetoric of the WHO um, um, uh, declaration and the, and, the, and the general definition of primary care that I showed you from Barbara Stice, Starfield. So we tried to operationalize what these two and others uh, uh, said uh, about the, the, the essential uh, features of primary care. Uh, subsequently, we used available data sources and information. That's very important. So we didn't do uh, any surveys in all the countries. We didn't do uh, interviews in all the countries, etc. We used the data which were available, either in, uh, in databases or in uh, scientific publications, and if these were not available, um, we used export panels in each country uh, to, uh, to generate this information. And even then, uh, I, I will come back to that, uh, in many countries, part of the information turned out not to be available at all. Also, the exports didn't know. For the uh, further analysis, we use data from the European Social Survey and the Eurobarometer. <clears throat> I probably forgot to, to tell you that, I, I see her name now, uh, Dionne Kringos was the uh, researcher at this project, and she also, uh, she's the first author of the book. Uh, not only, uh, she also uh, took her uh, PhD on this uh, project. So, the first question of the FAMO study was, what are the essential features of primary care? In other words, where are all these people speaking about when they speak about primary care, primary health care, about the, the essential uh, uh, contribution of primary health care for the whole healthcare system? So, we did, a, we did an international 
uh, literature, uh, systematic review of the literature. And we identified a number of dimensions. First of all, and we structured them uh, according to the Donabedian uh, structure, process, and outcome uh, level uh, levels. Um, first of all, on structure, we identified uh, three groups of indicators, uh, three dimensions with groups of indicators related. Uh, governance of primary care system, economic conditions, and primary care workforce development. And you see in brackets the number of of um, the number of indicators that we um, that we identified for each of these dimensions. The next group that were the process dimensions, and that's the uh, four. Uh, uh, dimensions uh, related to the process of primary care access, comprehensiveness of services, continuity of care, and coordination of care. And last but not least, although not least, that's not very true, uh, there are the dimensions of primary care outcomes. Actually, we couldn't find in the literature good uh, good outcome measures related to primary care. It's very difficult to, to relate the, uh, the role of primary care uh, to uh, things like life expectancy of or such kind of thing. But more, more intermediate outcomes are possible related to efficiency and uh, to patient evaluations. <clears throat> well, here you see the same group. Uh, the, 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 the dimensions on structure and the dimensions on process. And then you see just a, a, sh a short summary of the indicator. So if you speak about governance, then it is the, the definition of the system goals by the government. Uh, if equity and access has been addressed, collaboration policies uh, specified, things like that. When we speak about economic conditions, uh, it's about uh, the, the, the proportion of the healthcare expenditures for primary care, the coverage of primary care, uh, the employment status of uh, doctors and uh, other healthcare professionals and the way they are paid, and then uh, on workforce, uh, we look at the profile of the primary care workforce and the professional status, the academic status, uh, things like that. And when we speak about the process, uh, access uh, is, uh, is uh, operationalized in terms of the density of, uh, of uh, GPs, family doctors, uh, the geographic availability throughout the country, access to the practice, um, uh, and the comprehensiveness of services is uh, um, operationalized in terms of the first contact role of family doctors. Uh, the involvement in disease management um, and medical procedures, preventive care, health promotion. And continuity is the usual division in longitudinal, uh, informational, and relational continuity. Coordination, finally, is uh, in the gatekeeping system, skill mix uh, in primary care collaboration, and the integration of primary care with public health. So just to give you an idea, uh, altogether there were uh, one, uh, 99, I must say, almost 100 uh, indicators uh, identified to, to measure the strength of primary care. So uh, now you know what was the, the, the foundation, the, the, the groundwork for, for, primary, for the FAMO study, and this came out at the end. <clears throat> First of all, the data allowed us to, to um, well, to measure the primary care strength, the relative strength of primary care in, uh, in all these European countries. And you see, we, we, we grouped them in, in, two, in three groups, uh, the, those uh, with uh, relatively low strength and uh, with a high and then an intermediate group. You see it on this map. But probably more important was that we did analytical uh, studies. And uh, the analytical studies actually um, 
contributed to the available evidence um, for strong primary care systems. And you see it here. The FAMO study found that strong primary care is associated with better health outcomes in terms of fewer potential life years lost, in terms of less social inequity, in self-reported health. That's a very important outcome because that's an outcome which is convincing to policymakers. Uh, another one, also probably more important for policymakers, is the better opportunities for cost containment uh, as a result of lower uh, avoidable uh, hospitalizations. Um, and finally, we found uh, that's not something you can really uh, manipulate, uh, but it's a fact that in, in countries uh, that the, 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 um, the political composition and the political color of the government in the country contributes, and the dominant values in the country contributes to, uh, to, to uh, the way uh, primary care is structured. We also found that stronger primary care is associated with lower patient satisfactions. In other words, uh, policymakers may like uh, may like strong primary care systems, but actually patients do not like that so much. At least so far, patients they are taxpayers, but they are first of all they are patients and they like to to uh, to be as free as possible to see care uh, what they want and um, even if this is not really uh, efficient or even if this would uh, result in duplication or even if this would uh, not really beneficial for their health. And another thing is that we found no lower health expenditures in stronger primary care systems but this is a point we need to uh, further uh, explore. Because the number of observations, the number of countries, uh, in this analysis is very small. So the influence of, uh, of uh, well, of coincidental things, uh, coincidental developments are uh, are large. Well, this is um, uh, a publication. Uh, this is what this is one of our key publications. Uh, in which these uh, findings were uh, described and published. It is a, a paper in the uh, in the journal Health Affairs. It was published in April uh, 2013. So a question which is uh, very often <coughs> uh, asked is whether strong whether gatekeeping is essential for strong primary care. And the answer is yes and no. Uh, gatekeeping is indeed essential uh, for cost containment in healthcare. And, uh, but it's not essential for coordination. So if you, if you aim to, to, to improve the coordination function in the healthcare system and in primary care, uh, don't uh, just fight to achieve gatekeeping uh, which is often not feasible. There are other possibilities to increase the coordination function in healthcare. For coordination it's accent, is it, it is essential that, um, that, that healthcare providers are accountable and responsible for a defined practice population. And that's not that's not the same as gatekeeping. It is a list system uh, which is not necessarily coupled with the gatekeeping. So uh, the, 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 by, the, by the list system, the, coordination, the coordinating physician for any patient is known. A number of other observations in addition to the, uh, to the, re to the, to the really real evidence uh, observation from the FAMO study. First of all, and you saw it on the map, primary care systems in Europe strongly vary in strength. Uh, I can add actually prim primary care systems in Europe not only vary in strength, but they are also quite differently organized. This, the, the position of healthcare providers, the way uh, they work, uh, 
the collaborate the collaborating uh, arrangement etc it's all quite different but there are common themes to improve primary care uh, for instance uh, <clears throat> the division development uh, at governmental level uh, the inequities in access that we found the incentive systems can be improved um, Workforce shortages can be addressed, and last but not least, the coordination function of primary care, read, uh, in introducing uh, modes of list system uh, can, be, um, can be addressed. Um, furthermore, it is, there is no one best way to achieve efficient primary care. Uh, but countries should use comparable benchmark. There is no, best, best, no one best way, which means that it is use, useless actually uh, for a country just to copy uh, foreign good practices. Actually, starting from the general principles, uh, starting from the common themes, the, the individual healthcare systems should uh, should find tailor-made uh, solutions. Um, and uh, another observation from, from the FOMA study is that primary care system management requires improved primary care information systems at national level. Because, and that's the last point, uh, one of the observations, I could almost say one of our frustrations has been that uh, the availability and the quality of primary care data for research is poor in most countries. Um, I just wanted to point to the fact that the book is in two volumes. Uh, volume one is uh, let's say the integration of all the information um, and the, uh, the the comparisons between countries. Volume two um, includes for all the 31 countries structured country reports. So country by country, the primary care system is uh, described on a um, on a systematic and identical and uniform way. Um, and this volume two is uh, available online uh, via the uh, website of the European Observatory on Health Systems and Policies. The FAME database is accessible at, um, at uh, the website that you see uh, before you. And now I'm going to try to show you this. I hope this, um, let me have a look. Yes, so here we are on the website of Nivel, <coughs> and then under country information primary care, you come to this um, to this uh, uh, place. Here you see you can identify all the countries. Let's say, um, well, let's say we do Finland, and then you find the dimensions I spoke about. You see here governance, economic conditions, primary care workforce development, access, continuity, coordination, comprehensive quality and inefficiency. So here you see all the dimensions. And let's say, um, well, what should we do? Coordination is a nice one. And then uh, I think we can have a view on oh, no. it. Then the gatekeeping system. Yeah. You see, you can choose gatekeeping or skill mix or collaboration or integration of public health in primary care. Oh, let's, let's do this. Integration of public health in primary care. And then we can view for Finland. Mm -hmm. I, honestly speaking, mm. Sorry, I don't see anything. This is all live, you see. Hmm. <clears throat> then I take um, 
collaboration of primary care with secondary care. I don't know why it is not working. Well, aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. It's just very slow, I think. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so here you see the question. How common are the following forms of cooperation between GPs and medical specialists? Uh, medical specialists visiting a GP a primary care practice to provide specialist care. You see that's uncommon. Um, medical Special visiting a primary care to provide joint care with the GP, also uncommon. Clinical lessons by a medical specialist for GPs, that's usual. And then you see another question uh, about um, asking telephone advice by GPs from a number of medical specialists. And then you see that here. Um, and then that's interesting, with all the uh, with all the dimensions that you can find, here you see the comments. And well, in this case, the comment is only shortly. It's only short. Sorry. Uh, it states that that such cooperation is rare in all cases because of lack of time. And you see the reference. In this case, it is an expert opinion. So it's not really evidence from research. Um, <clears throat> well, what we learn. So you can go to other dimensions, other features, other indicators. Um, well, as you have discovered probably, um, is that in this way, all the information is accessible, but not really in a user-friendly user way. Uh, but that's, 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 that's what we have, and we cannot change that. It was not really a lot of money to, to, to build a more sophisticated uh, database. But anyhow, the information is available, you see, from all the countries, all the dimensions, all the features per, per dimension, and, uh, and all the indicators. Okay, so far this um, Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to go back to the meeting. I'm sorry, I'm going back to... Yeah. So this was the uh, FAMU database. You will find it. Is someone telling something to me? Um, <clears throat> I told you about the frustration. Um, the frustra th this is actually the table about the frustration of, uh, of the FAMO team. Um, but you don't need to read it. But this is a ranking of countries in terms of the availability uh, of information on the indicators. And um, so, uh, country, well, well, it's about the structure, the process, and the outcome, uh, the three uh, levels that we identified. And here you see the total ranking. Well, I'm sorry to say that the, uh, the Netherlands was the country with, with the, the best, oh, I'm sorry, with the best uh, available information. And for instance, uh, Greek, Greece uh, was, a, was a terrible country in terms of availability of data. And here you see, but, but overall, the conclusion from this table is that there are too many data missing, and you will find that in the database. So, uh, in the database, you will find quite some um, dimensions and indicators uh, for which is stated no information available. Uh, so, too many data are missing, and too little data are based on scientific research. You found, when we were on, on, on in the database, you found, as a reference, expert opinion. And, um, okay, uh, having an expert opinion, uh, and having, a, having a, an opinion of the panel of experts is better than having no 
no data at all, but as a researcher, I must say that I prefer data based on on uh, on uh, scientific uh, research. Okay, this is a good bridge uh, to shortly tell you uh, that we proceeded. So the the Fameux project has uh, has finished, and in the meantime, we have done another project, which is called Qualicops and. Uh, most of you may know that already, and <clears throat> um, well, this this webinar is not about Qualicops, but I just wanted to say that building on the groundwork of uh, the FAMO study, we have developed a new, uh, even more comprehensive study, uh, which is called Qualicops. And just just in in, in a few uh, words, what it is about. Qualicops is in forty in uh, thirty four countries. Uh, also Europe again, uh, but also Australia, New Zealand, and, and Canada. Uh, uh, the, this project has formally been finished, but as you know, uh, when the project, when the, when the contract uh, is over, the contract was with the European Union, uh, then actually the 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 the, uh, uh, the period of harvesting is starting. And uh, well, so in that in that way, we can say the, the 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 project is formally finished, but the consortium is still quite active and producing uh, lots of uh, publications and uh, and also several uh, PhD pathways. Um, <clears throat> so maybe in the future, and not too far from now, we can have another webinar uh, about the. Uh, the, the, the new evidence from uh, from the Qualicop study. We, the Qualicop study was different from the FAMO. Um, we we used the country information from the FAMO study. That's why I said we are building on the framework of uh, of FAMO study. So we used the country information and we used the same. Um, let's say the the, the 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 conceptual framework with the dimensions and the features, etc. Furthermore, and that's very important, in the Qualicop study, we have done a extensive um, a new data collection. We did surveys uh, among general practitioners and family doctors in in each country. Uh, well, around 200, and we did also in each of these practices surveys among patients. So, in the previous slide, you saw that we, in this way, we have got a huge data set uh, with data from 7,000 GPs and 70,000 patients. Um, well, if time allows, if time allows, I'm looking. Not much uh, anymore, Winke. No, so uh, you have to round up uh, soon. Okay. But, uh, well, it's better to, to skip. And um, this is about action strategies uh, to strengthen primary care. Well, actually, then I'm now running off by uh, offering you a free copy of the book. Uh, if you send me. Uh, if you send me your postal address, we will send you a free copy of the book. Send it to my email address, it's uh, indicated, w.boerma at nivel.nl. And finally, another advertisement, that's the, uh, uh, by the end of August, August 30 and uh, September the 1st, <coughs> there will be an interesting uh, conference of the uh, European Forum in Amsterdam. It's about uh, integrated primary care research, policy and practice. And I think uh, bringing these three together, research, that's us, policy and practice, uh, well, that's, uh, that's a major uh, strategy in, um, in promoting the possibility that the, our evidence is, uh, is used in a good way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Binke. Uh, well, uh, it's not only a strategy, it's a huge challenge uh, for bringing research policy and practice uh, together. Uh, it's always nice that other people uh, advertise your own things. So thanks a lot, Winke, for this <laughs> this, this uh, ad. Uh, but even thanks more for. Uh,
providing us all the information about the uh, FAMU um, uh, book and the uh, research which was behind it, and also the online available data. Okay, this is uh, for me the end of the uh, webinar. I didn't see any questions. If uh, other, if people still have questions, uh, they can uh, ask them through the, the same uh, uh, email address uh, to uh, Winke or to my uh, to our email address info dot uh, info uh, at sign uh, eu primary care dot org. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good lunch uh, and uh, hope to see you in Amsterdam or uh, at the next webinar. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Het is van de KPN voor haar privéadres. Ja? Meneer is even heel slecht. <laughs> Misschien heeft het net afgesloten. Heb jij dat glas Nee. Ja, ze aanlegde wel, maar ik heb het niet genomen. Oh, Oké, okay. nee, dat was echt niet. Mm.